Welcome to Inside the Indians, your source for insider information on the tribe. Stay with us as we bring you the latest about the players, managers, and people behind the scenes at Victory Field. Now here's your host, the longtime broadcast voice of the Indians, Howard Kilman. Hi everybody and welcome to Inside the Indians. On today's show, we'll speak with Greg Brown. He is the radio and television voice of the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Indians' parent club. We'll be back with Greg after these words. Greg Brown, the lead radio voice of the Pittsburgh Pirates, radio and television, I should say, is our guest on uh, Inside the Indians. Greg, always great to see you. How are you doing? Howard, I'm doing great. And uh, likewise, it is great to see you. Thank you. What are your feelings on this year's Pirates team? Well, I feel like they uh, during the offseason, they've made some moves uh, to try and take the next step. I feel like uh, the, the, the plan is uh, continuing to progress. Ben Charrington, Derek Shelton, team president, Travis Williams. And that I think uh, they've not said this publicly, but internally, I would think that in terms of wins and law, they have said publicly that the plan is to, to win more, which is the first time that they've actually said that, that the, uh, the so-called rebuild is over. The build continues so that, in terms of wins and losses, uh, you know, I think somewhere between 70 and 75 wins, if they do that, I think they can point to 2023 as a, as a step forward. And then really next year uh, will be one where I think going into the season, they will expect to contend for a postseason spot. And now they had not said those words, Howard, but, I, I do believe that that that's where they're thinking, and uh, and it, it makes sense to me. Not to not to dismiss 2023 because things can happen in baseball, and uh, that they're hopeful that that perhaps if, if things fall their way, who knows? But but uh, again, I think they're just looking for progress and win more games this year. How was O'Neill Cruz playing at the time he was injured? He was playing. Uh, like a guy who had more confidence, kind of the, the, the O'Neill Cruz that we saw the last couple of months of last season, uh, feeling more comfortable at the plate, not chasing, being overly aggressive. Really, uh, he surprised me, Howard, in, in I think how quickly he matured. Uh, he started to see it last year. You know, when he first came up, over-anxious, seemed lost at times. He, yeah, he would hit mistakes, but so many swings and misses, so many strikeouts, so often going outside, not just the strike zone, but his strike zone, which is different than, than most because of uh, th those long arms, that big body. And so I, I saw last year someone who had begun, again, to take that step forward and then coming into the season, a lot more confidence, uh, an attitude of, of a serious attitude, mature, wanting to prove to everyone. I, I asked him, you know, what his goals were. And he said, 30, 30 or 40, 40. And he said, I was out talking to him in Cincinnati uh, about not just himself, but he said, I think we are going to do some things this year. I think that we are going to fight for a playoff spot. And he pointed to McCutcheon and Santana and Choi's locker and hedges. And he mentioned Rich Hill and, uh, such a, a devastating blow to him and uh, to the uh, to the club and to the organization to the fan base. I'd been saying all winter long. One of the things I was looking forward to most was probably two things: the pitch clock and O'Neill Cruz. And uh, so O'Neill's gone for most of the year. I think they could hold for maybe a month at the season's end, but uh, just too bad. I'd love to see him get. 500 plate appearances plus and see what he can do with that. Uh, that's a great point. Now, I was really concerned when I saw that he's going to be out at least four months. That's a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and yeah, they 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 usually try and be conservative on that. So, uh, yeah, I still think at best case scenario, you're looking even when he comes back into your, the rehab. So it's post All Star break. Now you're looking into August, and now I'm sure he'll push the envelope, and and maybe who knows? I mean, we'll, maybe we'll see him sometime in August. But my my guess is I, I'm not going to expect to see him before September. So, uh, in terms of being the fan that I am of the team uh, and hoping they win more ball games, I don't. I just I'm not going to count on him being on the team before September. One of the guys who's gotten off grade is a very solid big league player, and that's Brian Reynolds. He's been tremendous. You know, he's such a solid pro. He had a really good year last year, and in particular, the second half. He struggled early, and maybe toward the last couple of weeks of the season, uh, had some issues. But uh, healthy, uh, just goes about his business. Uh, when they told him last year, the very last game of the season, that he was going to play left field, didn't make a big stink of it. He he had said before he wanted to play center, and he played center almost all of he did all of last year until the very last game. That was, I think, a precursor of what we were to expect in in spring training. And sure enough, we saw him play a lot of left and he's expected to play a lot of left uh, this year. I think they think that uh, that'll be healthier for him. He'll, he'll, he'll be in games longer and, and center field takes such a toll, but you know, I, he just, he's, he's the consummate professional. And um, I think he's determined to put whatever contract talks, uh, uh, keep them off the field and just let his bat uh, and his glove do the talking. And it may, it's really no surprise. But what I like about it, Howard, is that um, he is so professional. He uh, he's not a malcontent by any stretch, and and his teammates know it. The fans know it. Uh, he's just done it in a classy way. Where his agent came out during the off season and said that he'd like to be traded. And now you know there was some optimism uh, late in spring training, and uh, so I, I think they'll be able to to put that behind them and, and he wants to win. And uh, what, a, what a great guy to have in the middle of your lineup. We'll have more with Greg Brown. This is Inside the Indians. Greg Brown, the lead radio and TV voice of the Pittsburgh Pirates is our guest. Greg, we were talking about Brian Reynolds. And one of the things that's so interesting there, it looked as if they were going to get this deal done. They'd agreed on money. And then it comes out that he wanted an opt-out after four years. And I don't blame the Pirates one bit for refusing to do that. And the other thing now that's come out is the no trade possibility and a dispute about that. Howard, I get asked about it a lot. And in fact, I was on the other day with a, a talk show in St. Louis sports talk. And uh, they had, they had quoted a Pittsburgh talk show that I go on and, and talked about the host. And I said, and you can certainly appreciate this with, as well as anybody. I said to these guys, uh, without disrespecting those hosts of this radio show, because I know them well, that these Pittsburgh guys, uh, the only people that truly know the facts of what's been going on, are Brian Reynolds and his team, I'm talking about his agent, his wife, his family, and Ben Charrington and a select few who have been negotiating. So uh, one, one talk show I heard said, uh, Pirates should just do it. Just do it. And I said, do what? Do what? We have no clue about opt-outs, trade uh, clauses, uh, money. I've seen... Uh, in in print, uh, online, this the, the only people that know the dollars, uh, the particulars, again, are Reynolds and Charrington, essentially, with maybe two or three others. So all these other pundits that uh, make these suggestions that the Pirates should just do it, um, just sign the guy, uh, again, have no clue. And I, I believe that, you know, I've been a big Bob Nutting supporter. 
uh, because I've been around long enough. I've been through it with, with again, without disrespecting previous owners. I, I know them all uh, going back to the Galbraith family, had a good relationship with each of them. The, the, the attacks on Bob Nutting personally are flabbergasting. I don't get it. And any chance people get to somehow twist it to sound like it's just that cheap owner, uh, it, it just drives me crazy. And I, I want to pick up these. I shouldn't listen to these talk shows anymore. I want to pick up the phone and, and say, you know, you're, you're throwing out so many mistruths, uh, misconceptions, things that you don't know about. It's so unfair to Bob. Bob Buddy has stabilized this organization when they had one foot out the door. God bless Kevin McClatchy, who also helped keep the franchise. But, you know, Kevin McClatchy, the previous owner, needed somebody to step in and and uh, and stabilize this organization. And that's what nothing has done. And uh, he, he signed Hayes last year to a long-term deal. He wants to do what's smart. He wants to keep this team uh, – uh, and he wants his team to compete along with keeping this team afloat, which is not easy to do in small market teams. I can appreciate everything you just said. Uh, the one thing about the Brian Round situation, it certainly would appear the Pirates really would like to sign him. Oh, yeah. I don't, there's no question about that. I mean, uh, that that is fact, uh, that that they want to get it done. And I, and I would say, knowing Brian enough, um, I would say that he – and his family would like to sign, if possible, and stay in Pittsburgh. They're, it, they're comfortable. And you know, Howard, one of the neat things I think about the incredible Andrew McCutcheon story and journey uh, is, is what his signing meant to the organization, to the fan base, and maybe the trickle-down effect it had or has on the current pirate player roster, guys like Brian Reynolds. I wonder, I've never asked him this, but I was honored to be on the field opening day at PNC Park and introducing that that lineup. And when that sellout crowd reacted as it did when Andrew McCutcheon made his way out onto the field was uh, tear jerking. I mean, he had tears in his eyes when he came to the plate for the first time and, and the game had to be held up for a minute and a half. And he had to get back in the batter's box, wiping away tears. And I wonder what effect that must have on a guy like Brian Reynolds, if he's thinking at all about wanting to go into greener pastures. To see this, to go, wow, this place loves this player. This player loves this town and this fan base. That's what can happen if you embrace a city and a fan base. And McCutcheon could have gone other places. He had other offers this year. Uh, but to, to to call the owner, Bob Nutting himself, and to say, I want to come back to Pittsburgh, that had to mean a lot and has to mean a whole bunch to a lot of players on this team. Well said, Greg. We'll have more with Greg Brown on Inside the Indians. on Inside the Indians. And Greg, you and Joe Block, the two play-by-play men for the Pirates, carry a heavy load because you're each doing nine innings, and that's probably, what, about 150 times, maybe even more than that during the season. One of you is on radio, the other on TV. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's something that I've lobbied for over the years, Howard, to, to allow us both to do uh, radio and television. I, I think it keeps us fresh. Um, I, I like both. Uh, they're both challenging in, in their own ways. And it's especially challenging something that you have. I, heck, I should have called you uh, right away when I heard about the rule changes. I had no idea the impact it would have on a broadcast and especially radio. And I'm still learning. And I don't know when uh, it, it, uh, it'll finally sink in. Hey, dummy, quit looking away. You know, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be looking at my uh, iPad uh, maybe at a, at a detail or or a note, and I'll look up. This happened recently. Uh, uh, G Man Choi home run. I, I had been just looking down briefly because you know for almost thirty years, going back minor league, thir- about thirty five years for me. You you know you know this Howard. You get a, a timing down 
uh, when it comes to play by play. So, you know, usually with the pitcher and the batter and who's up and all that, uh, I have time to glance away and look something up. Or the, and you're not constantly, at least I had not been in the past, focused entirely on that field and what's going on between the lines. You know, you have to look down and away once in a while. And sure enough, I looked away just for a second. And all of a sudden I hear this crack and I look up and I happen to see and hear the crowd. And Choi hits this home run over the right field wall. And I just happened to catch it halfway uh, to its trajectory. Uh, and uh, it's, but, but anyway, that's a long winded uh, answer about how I do like the challenges of both radio and television. I think Joe feels the same way. And uh, we're also, I think, in a good way challenged in that we now have five rotating color analysts that we work with. So we're learning their personalities. We certainly have known, I've known Bob Walk beyond our broadcasting days, but he and I have been teamed up for about 30 years. Now he's backing off his road schedule, uh, much like Steve Blast did a few years ago. Uh, I've known John Wayner forever, going back to the minor league days with Buffalo. And, and now we've added uh, Kevin Young, who I've known for a long time, Matt Capps, Neil Walker bringing them into the mix and uh, and it's fun it's it's a it's a it's a challenge to 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 get them into these ball games do it the right way again with this this pace clock that i call it uh but uh, i think it, it really keeps us all on our toes and keeps it fresh well you do a terrific job i must tell you though i do miss steve blass on the broadcast well you and me both uh, i think we all do i think you speak for a lot of fans and uh you know, he's w become one of my best friends over the years. I, I, I miss the times. So I, I missed when, he, my gosh, this has to go back maybe 20 years where he decided to, to do only home games. So I missed being on the road with him. Uh, and then when he, he told me one off season, uh, he and I would, uh, it was a tradition going back to Three River Stadium, Howard. When we had time, uh, we would, he would, he got me hooked onto this. He would bring a couple of cigars. He liked Macanudo cigars. So we would eat in the press room at Three River Stadium. And then uh, he said, hey, we got, we got a half an hour. Let's go smoke. And we go over by this bank of elevators, uh, uh, three levels above gate C. And you could lean over and you could watch fans walking up the ramp at gate C. And, uh, and we would just sit there and, and, and smoke a cigar. And back then, you know, it was uh, not taboo to do it even in a stadium. Uh, and and we, we would do that, uh, even going into PNC Park, we'd find a, a place outside the ballpark we, on occasion. And then one winter, he called me up and he said, uh, what are you doing tonight? Well, he goes, let's go to this place we go to sometimes uh, in, in Pittsburgh, in, in a strip district. And uh, he, he said, well, I, wanna, I wanna have a glass of wine with you and a cigar. Oh, that, you know, we, would, we would do that on occasion, but that was odd sat down and got the glass of wine, we lit up the cigar. And he said, uh, this is going to be my last year he, going into 2019. And I, you know, I did gave me pause. And, uh, and he said, I wanted to tell you before I told the pirates. And, uh, I, all I said to him was that if you feel it's the right thing to do, I said, you're not slipping. You're still as good. As Howard, I don't know how much time we have here, but I'll just quickly. We have a just couple minutes. Okay, uh, one of the great stories, broadcast stories, I, I, I think about it all the time. Myron Cope was the longtime color analyst, really known as the voice of the Pittsburgh Steelers forever during their heyday. His best friend was the director of publicity for the Steelers, Joe Gordon. They had a great friendship, and they would have almost daily breakfast during the offseason. And one offseason, Myron says to Joe in the Myron's voice, you might remember Myron, hey, 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 Joe, uh, hey, uh, do, do me a favor. Uh, you're my best friend. I, if you think I'm ever slipping, uh, you've got to tell me. You're my buddy. So he says, you know, if I, am I ever slipping in the broadcast, tell me because I'm going to walk away. And one off season, Joe Gordon says to Myron, you're my friend. You told me a few years ago, if I ever thought you were slipping on the air to tell you you're slipping. And Myron Cope announces his retirement. Uh, and wow. I, I, it's such a beautiful story. And again, I told Steve, you aren't slipping, but he decided his wife was having some physical issues. And so I miss him dearly, but I get a chance to see him still uh, at the ballpark on, on a number of occasions. I see what you're saying, because it caught me off guard since he only was doing home games. I figured he'd go on forever. 
That's what I thought. And, and uh, he, he, t- the last couple of years, he, you know, it, 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 sometimes losing can beat you down and Steve loves to win and I get it. And, and, and the years of losing, I think kind of also came into play there. Uh, he loved the, the, the runs during the postseason, 13, 14, 15, but then the team started to sink a little bit. And I don't think he wanted to go through it again, where it might be three, four more years. Uh, he, he just, he loves the game. He, the game would get, got away. I think he would love to be broadcasting now, Howard, because the, 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 the pace clock is a game changer. Right. I say it's the greatest rule change in sports, at least since the NBA brought in the three point play. It might be the greatest change ever. In fact, I said that to Bob Walk the other day. Bob Walk said, no, it's the best change of any kind since the Magna Carta. (laughs) Greg, thank you so much. Always great spending time with you. Thank you, Howard. That's Greg Brown on Inside the Indians. I'd like to thank our guest, Greg Brown, lead radio and TV voice of the Pittsburgh Pirates. See you next week on Inside the Indians.